lot of us feel like we don't deserve to have our dreams come true or have good things happen to us. And sometimes, no matter how far we've made it or how much we've already accomplished, we still don't feel content. Why is that? The answer isn't an easy one. Most likely, it's when we grapple with feelings of self-loathing. Self-loathing is defined as hatred for oneself that often manifests as anger, self-sabotage, a negative view of oneself, and low self-esteem. It's important for a person to be aware of their feelings and attitudes towards themselves so they can start to change for the better. Here are seven signs you may be suffering from self-loathing and just don't know it. One, you tear yourself down. Self-hate makes you your own worst critic. Keeping an eye on your shortcomings is a good thing, but not allowing yourself room to breathe stems from an immense dislike for your current self. You think extremely harsh things about yourself and indulge in self-pity a lot, so much that tearing yourself down has become a daily habit for you. Everyone makes mistakes, but you're so hard on yourself that you can't forgive yourself when you mess up. You're quick to blame yourself whenever something goes wrong, even if it's not your fault. You never commend yourself for a job well done, but rather criticize yourself for even the tiniest of mistakes. You're plagued by feelings of guilt, worthlessness, and inadequacy that manifest themselves as frequent complaints about yourself and your life. Two, you feel insecure around others. If you find that other people make you feel insecure about yourself a lot, it might be time to ask yourself why. Most likely it's because you're constantly comparing yourself to them and feeling like you'll never be able to measure up, no matter what you do. Subjecting yourself to this kind of harsh judgment is a definite sign that you hate yourself. When you look at someone else, you always focus on all the things that they have that you don't, and it makes you ungrateful for all the good things you do have. You can't help but feel bad about yourself whenever you're around someone who's happy, confident, smart, attractive, or successful. Three, you neglect your self-care. Do you want your loved ones to be happy and taken care of? Chances are, you probably answered yes right away, because when you love someone, you want what's best for them. So if you really loved yourself, you'd want that for you too. This is why neglecting your self-care is a form of self-hatred. You don't sleep well, you're not eating right, you don't exercise, you don't try to look nice for yourself, and you don't do things that make you happy. It's not that you don't have the time or can't be bothered enough. It's more about refusing yourself the pampering because of a deep-seated grudge with yourself. Since your insides are at war with you, it only seems right to let yourself show it outwardly as well. So when you look in the mirror, all you see is a haggard reflection, unworthy of love, and that's how you like it. Four, you don't let yourself be happy. You're a pessimist who's quick at finding the negative aspect in every situation. You're wary of compliments or praise because it seems mocking. You don't see yourself in a positive light and refuse to believe what others say. However, you do take their criticism to heart because it reinforces your view of yourself. You're not comfortable letting other people help as you believe your troubles are yours alone and you deserve them. You find it hard to feel good about yourself. And this is what sucks all the joy out of your life. You resent the way you are and deprive yourself from anything, even remotely akin to delight. These are just a few of the ways that you deny yourself happiness, perhaps even unknowingly as you fester in your own self-hatred. Five, you isolate yourself from others. You struggle to maintain relationships with others because you feel like you don't deserve their love. Often you feel their attention and love is a burden for you. You don't consider yourself good enough to remain in the circle. Since you have a low concept of your own self, you feel like they're judging you as well. It may look like they're doing you a favor by including you, so you stay back because you think they're better off without you. You feel guilty for hanging out with them because you believe your presence is an intrusion upon them and you're holding them back. Your inability to love yourself makes you unwilling to accept love from others as well. As a result, you isolate yourself to refrain from inconveniencing others with your presence. Six, you put on a facade for others. You're one way when you're by yourself and then another when you're around other people. You wear a mask and don't let other people see the real you because you hate who you are. You try so hard to fit in and be liked by everyone and you constantly wish that you were someone else. You feel ashamed of your true self and you think that no one will ever be able to accept you, so you'd rather pretend to be someone you're not. And seven, you're afraid to dream big. Having ambition and dreaming something big for yourself scares you. You smother your own hopes and aspirations because you think you'll never be able to achieve them, so what's the point? You look down on yourself and all that you can do and refuse to leave your comfort zone. 
the possibility of failure and rejection terrifies you. You easily feel discouraged and worthless the moment you encounter a setback. You deny yourself opportunities to grow and have new experiences because you don't believe in yourself. Your insecurities make it hard for you to see your capabilities and you can't allow yourself to succeed. We all have a lot of self-destructive behaviors that are toxic for our mental health and emotional well-being. So many of us struggle with feelings of insecurity, emptiness, and worthlessness that it can sometimes lead us to hating ourselves. Becoming more aware of your self-hatred makes it easier for you to overcome it. And with time, patience, support, and dedication, you can learn to love yourself and live a happier, healthier life. Did these points remind you of someone, maybe yourself? Can you now see where such behavior stems from and why? Do these points make it easier for you to name your emotions and behaviors? Please let us know in the comments below. Also share this video with anyone you think might benefit from it and we'll see you in the next one.